RetroPie is a great gaming front end, but when you first install it, there's no option to play Commodore 64 games. So let me show you how to install and set up the Vice Emulator. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. RetroPie is a great way of turning a Raspberry Pi into the ultimate retro gaming console. It builds on Emulation Station and RetroArch to emulate a great range of consoles, home computers and arcade machines. Now if you haven't tried out RetroPie already, then please check out my video on how to install and set up a complete RetroPie gaming system with all the games for all the consoles, and I'll put a link in the description down below. But there is a big hole where the Commodore 64 should be. As one of the best gaming computers from the 8-bit era, we really need to fill this hole. So let's install Vice, which is the Commodore 64 emulator. If you look at the ROM folder in your RetroPie installation, you'll see a list of folders for each of the systems that the standard installation supports. Now here I'm connecting to my Raspberry Pi from my main PC using a network share. And again, please check out my RetroPie installation video to find out how to set this up. Now RetroPie also supports lots of other systems, but they are not installed as default. We have to install those manually. And you'll see here that there's no Commodore 64 folder for us to put our games into. So going back to the main RetroPie menu, we have to go to the RetroPie configuration option. Now I'm running a theme on my installation to make it look a bit better, and if you want to find out how to do this, check out my Making RetroPie Look Great video, which I'll link to in the description. We now select RetroPie Setup, which will run a console app that lets us modify our RetroPie installation. In these console apps, if you haven't used them before, you use your up and down arrow keys to change a selection in the list, and the left and right or arrow keys or the tab key to change the option at the bottom. Then press enter to make your key selection. The very first thing we need to do after you've installed RetroPie is to update this RetroPie setup script. So use your arrow keys to select this option and then press return to select it. Select yes to update it and your Raspberry Pi will start to download and install the latest version. Now this process can take a while to complete, but once finished, you'll have the latest version of the RetroPie setup ready for use. If you don't run this update process, some of the extra emulates we need won't install correctly. So selecting the OK option will take you back to the main menu. We now need to install Vice. RetroPie itself is built from a number of software packages, each of which provides part of the overall system. And Vice is one of the optional packages um, that you can install. So we need to select Manage Packages, and then select Manage Optional Packages, and this will bring up a list of all the extra bits of software that you can add into RetroPie. Now, as you can see, there are a whole range of additional systems that we can add to RetroPie, um, but we want to scroll down the list until we find Vice and then select it. This will take you to the Install Package dialog, and there are two options here when you want to install a package. Uh, one is to install it from a binary image, which is simply a ready-made version of the software that you want to use. Now this version was pre-compiled for you, so it isn't always the most up-to-date, but it's usually fine to get you started. The second option is to install from source. So I'm going to use this option, as it will download the latest version of the package and build it directly on my Raspberry Pi. So let's select that option, and the Raspberry Pi will start to download and install the Vice emulator. Now this process is going to take a few minutes to complete, but it does make sure that you have an up-to-date version of the software. Once that process is complete, RetroPie should report back that Vice has been installed. So just select Back until you get to the main menu, and then select Finish. And this should take you back to the main RetroPie front end. 
Now, although we've installed our Commodore 64 emulator, it won't appear in our main menu until we add some games. Now, Commodore 64 games come in a range of file formats. And if you've been following my channel, uh, and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already, you'll know that I'm a great fan of using MU Paradise to easily get hold of game files, especially since you can download complete game collections in one go. Now, if we go to the Commodore 64 page in MU Paradise, um, we'll find that there are three complete ROM set download options. Now, the first one here lets you download the games in cartridge format. Uh, and these files are, are great because they load instantly in the emulator. Um, but as not all games were actually released in cartridge form, you won't get a full collection. The second option downloads the Commodore 64 Preservation Project game database. So this is a complete collection of disk images, um, but unfortunately they are stored as the raw .nib images uh, and Vice can't use these. There are utility programs that let you convert these nib files to the required .g64 or .d64 files that we need, but this adds an extra layer of complexity that, that just gets in the way. Now the third option will download a full set of game tapes, and these do work fine in Vice, um, but they do load at tape speeds. Uh, so if you've ever used a real Commodore 64 with a tape deck, you'll know just how long this process can take. Uh, and yes, I am loading a, a program by tape here, and it is running correctly, uh, and we just have to wait for it to load. One caveat on the MU Paradise site is that the download links don't actually work. You need to install a workaround to be able to download games. Now I've made a video on how to do that and it only takes about five minutes and I'll leave a link in the description. Disk images are the best option, but I haven't yet found a complete collection in a single download. The best place I've found to get hold of discs is at c64.com. This site has a fairly full library of games, and they're all downloadable as .d64 images, which are great for Vice. But of course, you'll need to download each game individually. I'll leave it up to you what route you take, uh, but I tend to load the tape images first as I'm browsing through, and then replace my favourite games with disc images from the c64.com website as, as I come across good games. So once you've got some game files, you need to transfer these over to the RetroPie SD card. So on mine, I've set up a network share, so I can just drag and drop from my main PC. In the RetroPie ROMs folder, you'll now find a C64 directory. And all you have to do is drop your games in here. Now once that's complete, we need to restart Emulation Station. And once that's booted back up again, we should then get the Commodore 64 option appearing in our main RetroPie menu. Selecting the Commodore 64 will bring up a list of our games, and selecting one should start the Vice emulator and get it to load our software automatically, uh, so, so you don't need to learn the commands to load games on a Commodore 64. Most games use the spacebar on your keyboard to progress through the start screens. Once our first game has fully loaded, we need to make sure that the Vice emulator is set up correctly so that it recognises your game controller. For most home computer emulation, you'll also find it easier if you have a keyboard attached to your Raspberry Pi. Most require certain keys to be pressed to select game options. So with Vice running, you can press the A button or F12 on your keyboard to bring up the Vice menu. Once in the menu, you can use the D-pad or arrow keys on your keyboard to change your selection, the left shoulder button or your return key to select an option, and the right shoulder button or the backspace key to go back one menu level. There are a whole range of settings that we can play with, but for gaming, we only need to get the joystick up and running. So go to the machine settings menu, then select joystick settings, and then Joystick Device 2. 
most Commodore 64 games expect the joystick to be plugged into port number two. Um, but if you find one that doesn't work, you can always come back to this menu and swap it into joystick port one. Once you're in the joystick settings, you'll see a number of options for setting it up. You can specify your keyboard number pad as the controller. You can define your own set of keys on your keyboard. Or, as we're now going to use, um, we can set our game controller as the joystick input. If you now click the backspace key or the B button, this will take you back to the joystick settings menu. Now I've found that some joysticks don't always map to the correct buttons on my game controller. On my Super Nintendo uh, gamepad, the fire button seems to get mapped to my select button for some reason. Um, we can make sure though that everything is correct by going to the joystick to mapping screen. Here you'll see a list of the joystick buttons that we need to map. And all we do is we select each option from the list in turn and then press the relevant button on our game controller to map it. Now the fire button should really be mapped to the B button um, as the A button is used to access the vice menu. And then the other two fire buttons can then be mapped to your X and Y buttons. So you've now got the joystick enabled and made sure your buttons are correctly mapped. Everything should be ready to play our Commodore 64 games. But before we go back to playing games, we do need to save our configuration changes. Otherwise, we'll have to redo them all again each time we come in. So use the backspace or B button to get back to the main vice menu and select the settings management option. Here you'll see three options to save various settings, the, the current settings, hotkeys and joystick mappings. You can select each of these in turn, um, or you can simply toggle the option to save settings on exit to make sure that any changes you make are saved when we quit from the emulator. So I'm going to use the save settings on exit option. Uh, so when I get back to the main vice menu, I'm going to select the exit emulator option to make sure that everything gets saved. And that should now have everything ready to play all of your Commodore 64 games. One extra bit to note though, is that you'll also need to know how to press a few of the special keys on the Commodore 64 keyboard. On screen now is a diagram showing the keyboard mapping. And I'd also put a copy of this on the project page for this video, which I always create in my main website. And I put a link to that in the description. Uh, the most important keys you'll need to remember though are the space key, which is obviously mapped to your space bar, and the run stop key, which is mapped to the escape key on your PC keyboard. So you should now have full access to thousands of Commodore 64 games, all from within RetroPie. I hope you found this video useful, and please do click the like and subscribe buttons to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And check out the rest of the channel for lots more retro gaming, coding and making tutorials. So have loads of fun either rediscovering your Commodore 64 memories or meeting the games for the very first time. I look forward to seeing you again soon and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.